Ciao a tutti and welcome everybody to this new episode of SVN channel. In this episode we'll quickly discuss the forward forward algorithm proposed by Inton at the end of 2022. As written by him, the paper, the forward forward algorithm demonstrated the work well enough on a few small problems to be worth serious investigations. So why don't learn a little bit more about it? I'm Vittorio and welcome to SVN channel. First of all, let me say that it's quite exciting to discuss this paper with you. Indeed, even if Hinton is one of the researchers that proposed by propagation back in 1986, a few years ago he also publicly stated that we should throw away backpropagation and start everything again from scratch. So here we are with the forward-forward algorithm that, as you can imagine, is a new learning procedure for deep neural networks. However, from Hinton's word, the forward-forward algorithm is a somewhat slower than backpropagation and does not generalize as well on several of the toy problems investigated. So, it is likely to replace backpropagation for applications where power is not an issue. But, the areas in which the forward-forward algorithm may be superior to backpropagation are indeed the areas in which power is not infinite. Before we jump directly into the FF algorithm, let's quickly recap how backpropagation works. The astonishing success of deep learning over the last decade has established the effectiveness of performing stochastic gradient descent with a large number of parameters and a lot of data. And the gradients are usually computed using backpropagation introduced back in 1986 by this paper. Let's start very easily looking at a simple multilayer perceptron with just one hidden layer. When we wanted to train such a network, we start feeding at least one example into it. We use weights and biases of the hidden and output layers to compute predictions. Then we feed a loss function that should encapsulate what we wanted to teach to our model. Actually more what we wanted to make it do. So we have this very complex function parameterized by our samples and naturally the architecture of the network and with inputs our weight and biases. Our aim? Very simple. Make it as smaller as possible. Actually make it smaller on the test set, but <laughs> this is another story. The simplest algorithm that we could use to minimize our loss is to randomly change our weight, blindly searching for a minimum in the multidimensional space of our loss function. As you can imagine, this is super inefficient. Instead, a slightly more smart algorithm aims at changing weights a step at a time towards lower and lower values of our loss function. This is gradient sand that in order to work needs to know how the loss changes changing each of its weights. So, in other words, gradient descent needs to know the derivative of the cost function in respect to its weights and biases, also known as gradient. What is backpropagation? Backpropagation is the algorithm that lets us compute all these partial derivatives starting with the gradient of the cost function respect to the output and backpropagating this information till the input. Thank you, chain rule. What we simply needed to do is to compute the deltas for each layer and with them find partial derivatives of the cost function for all weights and biases. Backprop works perfectly well for most of the problems, but it also suffers of some limitations. For instance, it needs to store activations of all neurons for all input samples to work. This requires a lot of power and a lot of memory to work with big batches. Then, in order to work, backpropagation requires perfect knowledge of the computation performed in the forward pass. Indeed, if you insert a black box into the forward pass, we can no longer perform backpropagation. Finally, and this is very important for Inton, backpropagation is not the algorithm used by our cortex to learn. So let's see how the forward-forward algorithm can make our networks learn and create useful distributed representations. More similar on how our brains do. 
Let's start again from our simple MLP. With the FF algorithm, we still have the forward pass in the same way as before. We feed an input and we use weights and biases of the hidden and outed layers to get the predictions. However, we don't have a cost function at the output anymore, but we move learning at the layer level. In particular, in the spirit of capsule networks, Inton pushes us to look at the layers as vectors, so with an orientation and length. Then it proposes to have for each layer a cost function that aims at making the length of this vector bigger for positive examples and smaller for negative ones. So we have positive and negative samples. These can be all fed into the network or negative ones can be created by the network itself. At this point for each layer we have activations created by these two groups of samples. And what we simply have to do is to create a loss that minimizes activations for negative samples and maximize them for positive ones. Into proposed the sum of squared, but as you can imagine many more could be possible. So to sum up at each layer, we have a cost function and what we simply have to do is to compute the gradient respect to the weights of the layer itself. However, one last thing. Deeper layers could use the length of the previous hidden layer to classify positive and negative samples. We don't want that, but instead we want to only look at relative changes. So, to achieve this goal, we simply use layer norm at each layer. Hinton in this paper tested his idea on different modalities and with different toy problems. Here we don't have time to discuss all the details of the paper. However, if you want to know more, I leave it in the description of this video. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that without an output cost function, it's not so straightforward how to train a model, even for very simple supervised tasks. Indeed, for the FF algorithm it plays a fundamental role how to create positive and negative samples. For instance, if we wanted to train in an unsupervised fashion, we could take an image and create a blurred version of it to create a negative sample. On the other hand, if we want to use labels, we can simply fuse them with our inputs and simply provide them wrong to create negative samples. Finally, if you think about it, all predictions in a simple classification problem are not so straightforward. If everything goes well, we have distributed the representations of our dataset, but not an output layer to predict our classes. So, as proposed also by Inton, we can proceed in different ways. For instance, we can create an additional output layer with softmax activation at the end of the training. We don't need to backpropagate, but we use the representations learned by the network during the training. Or, if you fuse labels during training, we can simply feed samples fusing different labels and take the one in which layers agree the most. Ok, I think that's enough for this episode. However, as always I leave in the description a very simple code that you can use to start to play with the forward forward algorithm. Finally, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you for the next episode of Esprit Channel.